Hi, my name is Eric Trujillo. I'm a computer engineering student at Florida International University, and this video is for my mobile forensics course uh, with Professor Colleen. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about OpenWRT and Pirate Box. Um, I hope by the end of this video you'll have a basic understanding of uh, OpenWRT as well as Pirate Box and its applications and its uses. And, um, basically, OpenWRT is an open source firmware uh, based on Linux for embedded systems like routers and things like that. It all sort of spawned from the uh, Linksys uh, WRT54G router which is a highly customizable piece of hardware that came out and it spawned all these different forms of open source Linux distributions that you can run on your routers like DT, uh, WRT as well as OpenWRT. There's a bunch of others. And, um, but I'm going to be focusing on OpenWRT. And, um, yeah, Pirate Box was started by a man named David Dart as sort of an art project. And, um, it's basically an anonymous chat client where you can send files uh, from anyone who's on that network. Sort of like a, almost like a LAN party. Anyone who jumps onto this LAN network um, can share files. Except it's not a LAN, it's just based off of this router. So it's, uh, it's really portable as well as cost efficient as opposed to setting up a whole LAN system and walking around with that. And, um, so in order to set up your own, you're going to need a router. I'm going to be using the TP-Link MR3020 because that's what everyone use, seems to be using. And it's a $30 router, so it's super cheap. And it is super, super small. I mean, this is mine right here. And a, um, it's already plugged in, but it's really, really small. And, um, and so for about 40 bucks, you can basically buy your router and all the cabling and hardware that you need for it. So it's really great. Um, but for this setup, you're going to need a access to a modem, um, some sort of USB dongle, uh, whether it's you know one of these huge hard drives or just a thumb drive, it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to make your project portable, you can buy a, a small little battery like I did. And, um, I'm going to be going over the tutorial in Windows. I'm using Windows 7, but it works for almost any operating system. It's pretty straightforward. Um, in terms of software, I recommend you go and download it all now before we get started. And you're gonna need the OpenWRT firmware. Just Google OpenWRT, you'll find their website. You can see if your router is compatible as well as download the necessary firmware for it. Um, I'll post a link in the description for all the Pirate Box information as well as a, a written tutorial that I found that's very useful. Um, you're gonna to need to download all the things that it comes with as well as a, um, an SSH and Telnet client um, I'm using PuTTY, but you can use whatever you want. And, so in order to get OpenWRT installed, it's super easy. You're going to set, mine comes with a toggle, you're going to set yours to WISP mode, as well as navigate to 192.168.0.254. This is going to open up a admin panel. You're going to type your username and password as admin. You're going to see the giant TP-Link uh, navigation pane. It's kind of like a GUI. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, you're going to see a on the bottom left of the panel. You're going to see a systems tools. You're going to click that. There's going to be an option to update uh, your firmware. You're going to click that. Click the OpenWRT firmware that you just downloaded. Upload it and let the whole thing install itself. Hey, um, it's going to run through a reboot and stuff. So you're going to lose access to this page now because you're not running the OpenWRT firmware. So I'm going to switch over to my laptop and show you guys how to set things up. So um, the first time you launch this, you're going to want to use PuttyTel. Um, and you're going to have to set it up to Wisp and plug it in to your laptop using your Ethernet cable. I already did it. Hey, um, you're going to knock out the uh, Wi-Fi on your laptop or whatever machine you're using so that it doesn't interfere with your router that you're trying to plug into. Um, you're going to set up PuTTY, um, I'm gonna, I'll put in the uh, description also all the information for logging with PuTTY, whether it's SSH or Telnet. Um, but basically you're going to load up your settings, you're going to click open, 
and you're going to get hit with a little login as. You're going to type in root, type in your password, and you're going to hit with the OpenWRT uh, opening screen.
So by now, you should have PirateBox completely installed on your OpenWRT system, on your completely, totally hacked router, so everything should look really cool. But, you're not quite done yet, because there's still a lot of things that you can use PirateBox for. And once you have it all plugged in and powered on, you should be able to access it from your laptop. Um, what you should see is the Wi-Fi uh, areas, you should see that one's labeled Pirate Box Share Freeware. Um, logging into it should open up the basic Pirate Box uh, interface, which can be customized. And that's what kind of lends itself to being a white hat, black hat situation because I can customize mine so that rather than it saying Pirate Box, it has the university's FIU secure login lookalike. Um, I, in fact, customized the HTML of mine so it resembles the university's pretty closely. Um, if I were to walk around with it, and, um, anyone who basically loads up their laptop and is looking for Wi-Fi and hops on a mine by mistake, or especially with mobile devices like phones, where people are constantly walking around and trying to jump onto networks, they would see it, log in, and they'd easily input their user ID and password. And Mine being as portable as it is means that I can walk around the entire campus collecting people's login information and do whatever I want with it. Um, the same thing goes for really anything. I mean, I can walk into a coffee shop and have this style to look like a free AT&T Wi-Fi network. Just input your email and phone number and now I have your personal information. And, um, at the same time, it can be used for sort of white ha hacking in a way, because you can basically customize this so that you can allow it to be portable and use it for good. I used mine on campus and I was able to pick up a couple of people and they sent me music, um, free music, um, nothing illegal. But, you know, it was a really cool way to exchange files and communicate. So in a way, uh, depending on how you customize your pirate box, you can either use it for good or do things like install malicious applications and have people who log in for free Wi-Fi get hit with a virus on their phone. So, I guess at the end of this, at the end of the day, you should just be really careful with where you're logging in, as well as careful with what you do with your newly hacked router. Um, I hope this video helped. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please comment in the comment box below. Thanks.